You didn't need me or any other speakers to tell you that there is an elite, an economic elite in our country, a golden circle. And we've christened this elite the 1%. And the reason you didn't need us to tell you about it is because we all know about the 1%. We've known about the 1% our whole lives. We see their luxury cars on the roads. We see their luxury mansions in Kalini and Kinsale, and Dublin 4 and in Dublin 2. We read about their exploits in the newspapers. We read about their private lives in the gossip columns. But more than that, we serve them in the restaurants we work in. We build the mansions that they live in. We clean their homes. We mind their children. We educate their children. We drive them in our taxis. In fact, the 1% have been around for so long, most of us have don't really notice them anymore. We don't think it odd that one third of the wealth of this country is owned by just one hundredth of the population. That's a staggering figure. That's about 40,000 people, that's all that is. And they own one third of the wealth in this country. We don't find it maddening that our parents and our children have to wait for medical care. Well, the one percent they get it as soon as they demand it. And sometimes we forget that while we're struggling to keep a roof over our homes, the 1% are struggling to remember which of their homes is their primary residence. They forget which country they're living in, particularly people like Mr. O'Reilly and other tax exiles who aren't quite sure whether they live here 183 days a year or not. And that's what the 1% is all about. That's what the 1% network is all about. It's about shining a spotlight on the fact that there is an elite in this country who own vast, vast, vast sums of wealth. That when the government of this state are telling us that there's no money left and that they have no option but to introduce cutbacks and higher taxes, it is to expose that for the lie that it is. The reality is the 1% exist, although it might in fact be 2 or 3%, but we we'll call it the 1%. The elite exist and they control vast reserves of wealth which they have secreted in all sorts of assets in this state and beyond. We are now in the third year of, of an economic crisis, the worst economic crisis this state has ever known. And over the next couple of years, the future shape of this country is going to be decided. The government already committed themselves to four more years of cutbacks, and the British government are going to introduce further cutbacks in the six counties. In the upcoming budget, this government are talking about cutting 4,300 million through a combination of cuts and higher taxes. And if they succeed in their plans over the next four years, the Ireland that emerges from this budget is going to be more divided and more unequal than it ever was and ever has been. The battle lines have already been drawn. All public services are now legitimate targets for the forces of reaction. Day after day, week after week, an endless stream of politicians, of journalists largely working for Tony O'Reilly, economists and businessmen pollute the airwaves with their demands for cuts to public services and reductions in workers' wages and workers' conditions. If they succeed in their carefully laid plans, our public health service and our education service will end up, will exist in name alone. And workers will work under conditions more like the 1820s than the 2020s. The battle we now face is a winner takes all battle. All of us are going to have to ask ourselves how far we are willing to go to prevent the destruction of our communities and our wider society? Are we willing to participate in debates, to spark a debate about wealth inequality? Are we willing to convince our neighbours, our friends, our neighbours, our work colleagues that they need to actively defend public services? Ringing Joe Duffy just isn't enough. Are they willing to hand out leaflets, put up posters? Are we willing to withdraw our labour, to strike? Are we willing to participate in acts of civil disobedience? Are we willing to refuse to pay our credit cards, pay our mortgages, or pay our taxes? 
Are we willing to walk to the gates of Leinster House? Are we willing to block those gates? And are we willing to storm those gates? And are we willing to stand shoulder to shoulder when the forces of the 1% are unleashed against us? Because they will be. These are the questions we all need to ask and answer over the coming months because the agenda of the 1%, it can be beaten. But it won't be beaten by polite marches, walking from the Garden Remembrance to Leinster House and back again. And it won't be beaten by a general election that puts Fine Gael and Labour in power. The 1% are not going to go into the night easily. They're not just going to go, yep, hands up, here's the money, sorry about that. It's not going to happen. The wealth of the 1% will have to be taken from the 1%. Our wealth will have to be taken back from the 1%. And sometimes we forget the fact that we as workers, as consumers, as the indebted, and as tenants in private property, that we generate the wealth of the 1%. That's the key to all of this. The wealth that they have is our wealth. And we have to get out there and explain that to lots and lots of people. Most people that turned up today didn't need that explained. But unfortunately, a lot of the population don't see it that way. And that's the task for us. This is a brilliant start. This campaign is only, what, two weeks old, three weeks old? The concept of the 1% is already out there. People are asking, what are those posters about? What's the walk and tour about? And that's what we need to do here over the coming weeks, months, and years, is build a concept, build a campaign around the concept of the 1%, the wealth that they hold, and our right to take that wealth back. And we can do it. I know at times there aren't huge numbers coming onto the streets, but we all know the levels of anger that are there. We all know the levels of frustration that are there. And when we create the right conditions and give people the right access point, they will come onto the streets, and a popular demand can and will be built to target the wealth of the 1%, to take back that wealth that was taken.